But good evening, everybody, and thank you very much for inviting me. I'm going to try and whip through this evening three different things. How to choose binoculars, how to use them, and what to look at. I will also at some stage be passing stuff around. There is nothing in here that I have brought that do not touch on it. If you haven't used a parallelogram before, come and play with the thing, because they are wonderful bits of kit. <coughs> this is the reason they're incredibly portable. Dead easy to set up. And that's, in our weather, that is brilliant. The number of times I've been out with um, either 40 bit astronomers or Wessex Astro, where people have you know, they brought kit to set up. And I've been observing for half an hour, three quarters of an hour before they started, and then the clouds roll in and they haven't observed. <laughs> I have. Because if, particularly if you're using handhold ones, set up, take out the case, not around there, you're done. And even those big ones, um, when I use them at home, from making a decision to observe to actually observing can be about 10 minutes with this setup. That's the speed of setup you're talking about. Those of you who know photographic heads will know that that is mounted backwards. The reason for this is the camera should really be looking that way. It only goes up to 60 degrees. And it goes down to zero for photographing stuff on the ground. I presume. So you just turn the handle around. And now the binoculars on there, that will go nice and high. But what's happening is your feet suddenly start getting in the way. You know, you've got an infinite universe. There's a tiny little bit of space time around here. And your legs and the tripod leg try to occupy the same bit of it. And you get to have to do limbo dancing. <laughs> it's really, really uncomfortable. So if you're going to mount reasonable sized binoculars, I have become convinced that the best way to do it is to pop the thing on a monopod. And that becomes a really useful bit of kit, particularly for sitting down. And it maintains one of the advantages of binoculars, which is portability. There are other options. I thought I'd try this. The seven-day shop you might have heard of. This is outfit, I think, from Jersey or Guernsey, somewhere in the Channel Islands. They do this thing, which is a neck pod. And I remember years ago, one of Patrick's books had something like this in. So I thought, well, I'll try that, see what it's like. It was on special offer. It was only about four quid at the time. And what happens is, when I get it right, is that clips on there. That extends. And actually, it's a lot more comfortable. It's surprisingly good. But you don't need to go to this sort of expense. The, you can use upturned brooms. Um, the best thing I've found is actually one of those window cleaners with, with, a, thing with a tilt head and the extensible um, rod, because then you've got height adjustment, you've got tilt adjustment on it. And with this, I just set this so it's, it's sort of frictiony and, and moving and that goes up and down. So, but pass it around, try it. If you're going to have them mounted, they're going to spend a lot of time looking up, so they're going to get dewy. Nothing makes dew caps long enough. There's no such thing as a long enough commercial dew cap. So with a bit of two mil thickness, cheap yoga mat. which I managed to get because I, I bought a better one. So I could this one. <laughs> and that extends the dew shield and that, you know, I, I get a, you know, on a really dewy night, I get about three hours before that goes. With any other binoculars on a dewy night, what I tend to do is when I'm not looking at them, drop them down inside my jacket. And it may be that if they have got a bit cold, they do dew up because the air inside the jacket is moister. But the what you will find is that it clears pretty quickly. That is my okay. Look where the weight's going. It's going down here. Once you're looking upwards, it's, everything's higher than your heart, so it's going to start getting tired. The moment you do this, any engineers amongst you will notice, hey, he's created triangles. Triangles are stable. And the further up you're looking, the more weight is taken here, 
which is supported, particularly if you're on got your head supported on a recliner or something like that. And it's a heck of a lot steadier. Better. So you can just start to see some stuff in there. And you can see slightly less than you can with 10 by 50s normally. But you take them somewhere dark, like Exmoor, you lucky people, and you can really start seeing a heck of a lot. And 10 by 50s, you'll, you'll probably see more around Exmoor than um, in 10 by 50s than someone will with 100 mil binoculars in a suburban location. I think we could probably have the lights on for a moment, actually. See if we can pass it round. This is a thing to avoid. Okay? It has got ruby coatings. So if you look at something white with these, well, pass them around. Don't bother trying to focus them. Um, don't bother trying to get a single image. You won't. <laughs> okay? You can try the different zooms on them, and uh, the, the low-end zoom is like looking down a tunnel. But see what colour you get. These are possibly the worst things. And I have an object selection page on it where you can do things, put your latitude, put your horizon altitude, so if it's not worth observing below about 25 degrees, just chuck in 25 there, the, the, the aperture of your binoculars, what sort of type or types you want to look at, you can select, what constellations you want to look at, what limiting magnitude you're interested in, you can decide how you're going to arrange your search, submit the search, and so from the one we've got there, which is open plus in Cassiopeia, limit, limiting magnitude of 8, Using 70 mil binoculars, we've got those ones there. I've also got seasonal charts, so you, you just put in the month and the time if you're interested in, and it will pull up a it will pull up a chart for you where all the little coloured things and there's a key up at the top there which you haven't put on this. And on, by clicking on any of those, well if you map, if you just hold the mouse over it, it'll tell you what it is. If you click on it again, it will pull up the page something like this. So going back to Kemble's Cascade. So what is it? It's an asterism, it's in Camelopardalis, it's RA and Deck if you want it, magnitude, those are actually the magnitude of the faint stars you need to see in it. Recommended minimum aperture, 50 mil, um, tells you that that is a five degree aperture circle, so a yeah, decent ish. 10 by 50s will have slightly more than that, so put you in the right bit. How to find it, which is you hop across from the two, that's Cassiopeia there, the two end stars of Cassiopeia, same distance between them further on, and bang, there it is. Tells you a bit about it as well, so what's there, and we'll also pull up then the finder chart for it, there it is there, with anything else in the image there and what you might expect to see to have been washed out in that one. Apart from that, um, thank you for listening. Um, that's a bit about binocular astronomy. Okay.